Dogs. Good morning, Toby. Good morning, Tuck. You have a good day? Good boy, Tucker. People liked your collar. Your collar looks so fancy. Camera does not want to focus on you this morning. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. A lot of work that I need to get done and not a lot of time. I don't, I don't know how long this vlog is going to be. There's going to be a cold front moving in here in like a week or so. Several days will be dropping down to around like 24 which means that I will have to bring in some more plants. There's still things out there like the tree fern, the fetsias, the oleanders, and just a whole bunch of more cold tolerant plants. They're going to need to come in when that happens. And the cold tolerant plants are going to be going over here. So I need to, all this stuff has got to go. I need to get moved into their places where I'll be keeping them during the winter time. There's a lot of stuff here. Things are just piled on top of each other. So this was overdue anyways. This needed to get done. Apparently, this alocasia has decided that it's time to go to sleep for the winter, which I'm okay with because this particular alocasia, this is a, uh, I want to say it's a Metallica or a Plumbe. This one is a Mealybug Magnet. They love this plant, so I would uh, almost prefer just go to sleep. I don't want to have to mess with you this winter. I can't even walk through here anymore. You know, it's amazing to me. I thought that I had really, like, purged a lot of plants, but somehow there's still less room. I don't get it. I didn't even buy, I don't, did I buy any house plants this past winter? I bought the Dracenia Draco back there, but otherwise, as far as four plants are concerned, I don't think I did. Pretty sure I didn't. I think everything that I got this year went into the ground or went into like arrangements and planters. There are a few small house plants, like tabletop things, but not things that or out here and would be taking up but I don't know. I don't know I don't know what happened here. Well they grew, so there's that. This monstera here, that's going to be taking up a lot more space than it ever has before. So I need to account for that. And things just aren't arranged. That's part of it. Lost my sandal there. Well my plan was to just push the big stuff out to the driveway and then get the little things arranged in here, but it's raining. Doesn't look like it's going to stop raining for a few days either, so I don't know. There's no plants here. We're just, I'm going to be moving plants around, maybe talking about plants and just rambling and chatting for a bit. Does that sound okay? I hope so. The Croton, it's been busy. Look at, just look at all that. It's what they do. I don't get too hung up about that anymore. In years past, it used to really bother me with the leaf drop, but it's just kind of something that they do. Something I have done before that worked really well to stop with the leaf drop or to help cut back on how much leaf drop that they have was to push them into shade, like about, I'd say maybe a month before I bring them inside, which is really just hardening plants off. That's something we're supposed to do anyways. They tend to kind of harden themselves off if you live places like I live where you have seasons and you let them experience some of that. But with the Croton, it's generally that change of light from outside to inside. And then the other factors like the airflow and moisture, all those things. Those are things that can play a role with all that stuff falling off of them. But like I said, that when I move them into the dark, like not dark, dark, but pretty heavily shaded area about a month before bringing them in, it, they really didn't drop very many leaves at all. I didn't do that this year. I just didn't really have time. The bad weather sort of came out of nowhere, kind of. Really, it just rained a lot during the last like three weeks of October. So instead of taking the time to be outside and do things with them, I was just like, eh. So that would have helped prevent a lot of the mess down here, but it's okay. I can go ahead and sweep it up. I don't have the plastic up yet. The plastic will run right about from here, just a little bit over from this line on the ground and go all the way up to the wall. I could cut another piece of the styrofoam, but I don't really think I need to. I haven't for the last couple of years and it was okay having a few planes just laid out on the cement. They seemed fine. I know that that seems pretty narrow, but remember most of this won't be here because it's, it's gotta go over there. Oh, and I did have someone ask me, I haven't even started moving plants yet. That's fine, I can answer some questions right now. Somebody has asked me how I water out here. So it kind of depends on how I'm feeling and what I just want to do with the plants. What I've been doing right now is just using this hose that goes to my fish tanks, hooking it inside the house and just bringing it outside and watering with that. Otherwise, what I've done in the past is just use a pump. I still have the pump. It's there in the pool pond and there's a hose hooked to it. I just plug it in and use that to water everything. That pump's gotten kind of old. It's not really working very well. So right now I'm just 
using that hose and it's working fine. I also mentioned in one of my more recent vlogs that one thing that's different this year is that things are scattered about pretty haphazardously because I had people helping me move the plants and so I just said like just get them in just bring them in and I'll figure out what to do with them later and later is now I am going around and like finding things and being like oh there's that hibiscus there's my false aurelia oh this is where that Tahitian flame hedichium went that's good to know I was wondering where that was I mean it's been right in front of me this entire time but I've just been more focused on like the construction with the construction <laughs> just setting up the shelves and things on that end of the grow area than over here so things are just popping out to me as I stand around and look at them more individually especially just looking down and seeing the things that are in here like these shouldn't even be in here like I like to keep the little plants towards the front the plants that really like a lot of warmth they all go towards the front of everything so that's the warmer area the closer you get to kind of this area is where things are a little bit more chilly I'm going to try and do something about that this year. I'm going to insulate these garage doors and this entire wall over here. Because it doesn't make sense that I took the time to insulate and drywall this entire garage. But not this wall with the like cheapy cheap metal doors on them that the cold just blasts right through. Right? Probably do something about that. If anybody has any tips on the garage door insulation, let me know. Because like when you get online and read about it, the, there's just everybody has a different method that they say is the best and uh, to my understanding just using the radiant barriers seems to work fine that's what most people are using but the methods to how they do it some people say if you do it one way it doesn't work if you do it another way and i'm just like well come up like really it's one of those things where i feel like maybe it's getting a little bit over complicated but i don't know does anybody have any experience with that let me know Hooperiana, i love this palm tree it's so pretty and very low maintenance and low fuss but it does take up a pretty big area, doesn't it? I mean, it goes all the way from here to over, that's probably seven feet, maybe? I don't know, something like that. This is one that I might move into the house. I'm not sure, I haven't decided yet. I don't like to keep a ton of plants in the house just because I have this whole space out here, so it's easier to keep everything in one place and keep them watered outside. But the Hoopriana, I thought would be a moisture lover and something that needed to be watered all the time, but it really, it hasn't been fussy. So it might be good in the house. I might give that a shot. That would free up some more space out here. Cause I need, I need to be able to get through here. This is a problem. I need to just pull the little guys out. Oh my poor Croton. This is the one that I forgot to bring in. So sad, but it'll recover. Not sitting down there, hidden inside of everything. Have to get that moved to a spot where it's going to actually be able to get light. You know, having little plants stuffed down inside of everything. That's not really, that they need to, they're gonna be shaded. Been making an okay amount of progress out here. This philodendron, I did a video on this. Oh, I think it was the last video that came out prior to this one. It had some more big leaves on it that I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I cut them off mostly because I need to get this squeezed underneath my grow lights over here. And they were just wonky on all over, all over the place, which is my brain. You ever talk and then like it, just everything stops working. Brain was like, no, no, stop. We're not gonna talk anymore. Probably means I should put the camera down. This anthurium here, it had been sitting over on this table over here. It had a whole bunch of cold damage on it that took a few weeks to show up. I thought the plant was just fine and then it was like, ugh, just started going downhill. So I came in, did a pretty hefty amount of pruning on the plant and I decided to leave a few more leaves than I probably should. Kind of like you can see this one right here. I could probably cut that off. This one right here I could definitely cut off. I just couldn't, from sitting at the table, I didn't really see how bad that one is. But these over time just require a decent amount of cleaning because after they flower, they leave all those little sticks in there from their old blooms and it, those just pull right out that's no big deal those are easy enough to get out it's mostly cleaning up from the flowers because this anthurium was flowering like insanity over the summertime and uh, right now i'm debating whether or not to repot it because i think that it would benefit from a repot but i don't know like how i want to go about it. With something like the anthurium, this type right here, there's options. So uh, you can see how its stem has started to climb here. See that right there? And it's putting out aerial roots. 
they want to climb, and I've talked about that with this in Thurium before. So I could go ahead and put this on something to allow it to start to do its thing and climb upwards. Or the other option with these is to come in and actually make a pretty decent size cutting on the stem. By decent size, I mean like a deep one. I could cut it just really a few inches above the soil surface. You want to, you want you come to work today, camera? I can go ahead, make a cut, and then take that bit of exposed stem and stick that down into some fresh soil and that will root out. And then the plant will be down lower and hopefully put out more little babies. And then the more babies you have, the more foliage, the more plant starts you have, I should say, than the more flowers. Whereas if I go ahead and let the plant start to climb, it's just going to start, you know, going up a pole and, uh, but they, these typically still will like offshoot even when they're climbing. So that doesn't necessarily make a difference as far as getting the flowers going. I think that this plant would look cool climbing. We don't get to see that very often. Usually they get chopped and put back down into the soil. I'm a little interested to see what would happen with that. So I might hold off on the repot on that until I have time to make a pole for it. Or heck, I might just, um, tomorrow's Black Friday. I bet there'll be all kinds of things on sale. I could probably find some really cheap, just like moss poles just to save myself the time. They're easy enough to make, but if I can get them for like eight bucks, I just I might just save myself the time and just see if I can get a cheap one. That's not a bad idea, might do that. I have brought my orchids outside. They need to go onto this PVC that's like, it's impossible to see. See it up there? It's kind of twisting up there behind that pretty I don't even know what this thing is, but it's beautiful. Up there, I need to figure out, it's it's facing the wrong, it's supposed to be going this way because I raise and lower it down into this water to soak those roots so that they can drink. They need a good amount of water. It's just easier to soak them than to spray them when you're keeping them indoors. That's just my opinion. When you spray them, the water goes everywhere. That's something else to handle. I'm just kind of like thinking out, oh, I moved the Monstera because I could have talked about that. So <laughs> here's it, the, oh, the plants, they did a lot of growing, like a lot of growing over the summer, which is fantastic. I'm happy about that, of course, but it <laughs> did, it's a little bit more of a curveball than I was expecting. That's sort of what I was saying at the beginning of this video was how I was a little bit puzzled as to how I have less plants, but somehow still less space. And it's, it's because things grow, which is great. That's fantastic. All this really means is that it's time to start keeping a few more things in the house, which I'm okay with. It's like I said before, it's just nice having them all in one place because it's a little bit easier to take care of them. But some of the plants that are a little bit more tough and just don't need quite as much attention, I could take them in. And then what I usually do is I'll put some pine cones around the top of the soil. That helps keep the cats out of the pots. They don't like the way the pine cones feel. So the cats plus the, I like just having everything in one space. That's why. I prefer to keep everything out here. But plants like the White Bird of Paradise, they're beautiful. And I enjoy having them out here, but they have such a massive footprint. The pots aren't huge. They're in 15 gallon pots now. But the spread, you know, just from one leaf to the other side when they actually are flushed out with all of their foliage, it's like a at least an eight foot space. That's that's too much. I don't, they're cool plants, but I'm not that cool. I don't like them that much. And I I think I have a spot in the house for maybe one of these bird of paradise. I don't know, I'm gonna have to think about that. Oh, and <laughs> circling back here to the anthurium, I really should have completed that thought before moving on with other things, my bad. The only reason that I know it's okay to go ahead and wait is because the roots on here, I mean, the plant's looking great. There aren't any bugs or critters down in there. There's no foul odors. There's not a bunch of dead roots. I mean, it's really, it's just, it's just nice, happy, healthy roots so I don't have to rush to get this plant repotted and that's it's good to be able to pull the plant out and have a look at the roots I'm not saying for anyone who's new with plants I'm not suggesting that if something's wrong with your plant that you should immediately lift it out of the pot and look at its roots it's good to lead with the leaves and go through the process of eliminations but this plant like I said it had experienced several cold nights so this is I mean it's pretty that's what's to be expected on this leaf this is a pretty old leaf so that actually could even be some sun damage where this plant got moved into a, a, its location it was underneath a fountain during the summertime and uh, maybe it got moved a little bit too abruptly possibly 
that would be my guess because this to me when I see this browning on here it's kind of hard to see there's a lot of reflectiveness going on let me come up here see if that's any easier is that better not really well that to me looks more like sun scorch it's dry and scabby and scaly there's no mush to it it's in the center of the plant there aren't a lot of other discolored patches around it that are orange or yellow and have like a discoloration that would make me think that maybe there's something bacterial or fungal going on that's more than likely just sunburn probably okay anyways thought completed moving on that anthurium usually goes right here and normally does very well in the spot right here it gets like just the right amount of light there's a nice bit of humidity from the water here the lighting is going to be a little bit different this year because the monstera has grown so much that i'm not gonna be able to keep as much on this table as i used to because everything down here is going to end up being shaded which is just that's i'm so happy that it grew so much <laughs> but you can see like there's pretty big gaps back there in the table where this would normally be full of pots and i was just like i don't I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. That's probably not a great idea. Not likely. I may uh, have to invest in some more grow lights, which is okay. I can get the, some more of those sand side bulbs. I really like those, and that would make a difference. So I might need to come through here and actually put a couple more up here on some long cords that hang down lower to get some smaller plants that are going to be over here in the front because... Yeah, they're going to be fairly shaded. I pulled the croton back, and that's freed up this area here. The plants will usually come out to, like, right around here. Something like that. I think that's about right. I normally have my hibiscus right around here, but there's just... You see how dark it is over here? Because the, the croton also did a tremendous amount of growing. Again, very happy about that, but all the stuff underneath needs light. So, and I had kind of anticipated this being an issue i was wondering if perhaps you know i knew before i brought the plants in that the croton had grown a lot and so had that monstera and um my plumeria also is taking up quite a footprint down there a very very wide footprint but that's okay i'll have to be strategic that's all at the end of the world been doing a little bit of sweeping gotten a fair amount of things moved around I'm not quitting. I'm going to try and do some more in here tomorrow because I'd like to get to a point where I can get the cold, hardy plants moved in. I don't know if I'll move them in in this vlog, but at least have the space to do that. But today's Thanksgiving, so I got a lot of work to do in the house. Need to finish some of my Christmas decorating. I have a garland that goes up over here, cleaning and dishes, <laughs> and then the wrapping paper area. This has gotten kind of full of things. Hi, hey, pumpkin. How's it going? Okay, thanks for talking, Pumpkin. So anyways, I've been wrapping. I have almost all my shopping done, but this has been the area where it's just a mess. And the Chris, yeah, you get it. I need to handle all this. It's a lot. Is it a good Thanksgiving, Pumpkin? Did you have a good Thanksgiving bite? You even gonna look over here? No? I didn't think so. I was going to vlog the process of cooking and getting the decorations up and everything, but there's, there was just no way. You know how it is when you're cooking a big meal. All the multitasking with the cleaning, getting all the decorations set up, and then like casseroles in and out of the oven. Then of course there were people here, just the people who have been in my bubble. Everybody was COVID tested, wore masks, ate very far apart from each other, despite having been tested and been staying inside and away from people for the last couple weeks still played it safe just immediate family it was just the five of us essentially it was just like big meal time family time i don't even know what that was supposed to mean yesterday kind of fried my brain a little bit oh you hanging out with the rainbows Pumpkin, look at you hanging out with the rainbows oh there you go you be a rainbow kitty where's their paper towel on the floor what happened over there i don't know if i want to know i need to move this which you probably can't tell on camera. It's kind of big and kind of heavy, but I think I can do it and just like slide. It needs to it needs to be in the backyard. This doesn't need to be on the front porch during the winter time. I think it'd be nice to have something evergreen to look at through the windows in the kitchen, but I'm going to give it a shot. Look at how great the Alyssum has been doing in here. It is amazing how they just rebound and start looking so full and lush and colorful when the nighttime temperatures start to cool off and during the summer. They kind of fizzle and just they don't look as pretty when things get really warm and toasty outside at least not where i live not for me so i guess it's kind of just the same story with a lot of annuals they need a midsummer trim i do my midsummer trim with my alyssum in like 
September, <laughs> so very, very late summer, just to give them a chance to go ahead and flush back out for fall and sometimes early winter, but I have a feeling 20 degrees, that's probably going to kill them. We have a night coming up here in a few days where it's supposed to get that cold, but I don't know if it will. Never really know. Oh, some breaking's been going on too. Like 20-something bags of leaves over there ready to be picked up and collected. Do you ever have those spots or those projects where every time you look at it, you remember a thing you're supposed to do, and then you say, I'm going to do that later, and then it never gets done? <laughs> like the last year, maybe two, every time I come through here, I remind myself, hey, you need to grab some gloves and get these prickly pear cactus, these apuntias, off the walkway because that's really rude for people who need to walk through here, but I just I just keep forgetting. Maybe my subconscious is just like, no, go away. I don't want visitors. Alright, not to toot my own horn or anything, I've gotten really good at scooting things this year. I'm, a, I'm like a professional scooter. My scooting game is on point. It's a little bit unnecessary at this stage of my life, but hey, why not? Preserve the back, right? Need this thing for as long as I'm around. Uh, that was the most wonderful fragrant plant moving I've ever done. This alyssum smells amazing. I haven't really done many updates with this planter since I moved it out to my front porch, have I? This one in the springtime, it wasn't a video. This is a Bracken's Brown Beauty Magnolia here in the pot. It's a, uh, I believe this is a Dolce Silver Gumdrop Hookera that I took a division of and put another one over here on this side. Originally there were two, there were two different hookers in here. There was a Peachberry Ice, I think that's what was in here, as well as the Dolce Silver Gumdrop, and I decided I didn't like it, so I just went ahead and took a little division or something. Or maybe I had one laying around. I can't remember either way. So one's a little bit smaller than the other, but I think that's fine. Those will get bigger and balance themselves out over time. Need to clean this out. Azalea, I think this is Autumn Carnation Encore Azalea. This azalea bloomed and bloomed and bloomed off and on all spring and all summer and look here we are in almost december and still has flowers on it i didn't deadhead it or anything heck i don't i didn't even really fertilize it i got one very light fertilizing that was it it's just been doing great i really like the foliage on this one the leaves i think that they look so pretty on this particular azalea any of the azaleas the evergreen ones that have that fuzzy glossy green texture to them and shine they're my favorites i like shiny things love some shiny foliage 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 i don't care who cares it doesn't matter and yeah still see some flowers and like i said i'm pretty sure that this is the autumn carnation encore not positive i can't remember there was a time when i used to remember to keep the tags in the pots but looks like i didn't do that with this one nope definitely didn't okay and there's one last thing uh, like big thing and it's it's this the queen palm this area has held on nicely considering the weather's been so erratic and up and down but the purple heart plants there's some damage to them and they got kind of long and leggy which they tend to do but they held on okay considering how cold it's been and the lemon coral sedum look at that it's still so nice and lush and full and beautiful that i should take some cuttings from the variegated set Chrysia, shouldn't i from that Tradescantia. I need to get that out of there. That's really neither here nor there. I need to, I've got to get this queen palm out of the ground. I should probably do some of those pumpkins too. I don't want rotten pumpkins sitting here and then have like be plucking up little pumpkin seedlings all year, next year. Huh. I didn't have this planted all the way down, but that doesn't mean <laughs> that it didn't root into the ground. Like I have a feeling this might be a little bit tricky and I might have to have somebody else do it for me just to be safe. Still trying to be careful with my shoulders. I don't know, I'm gonna like get up here and play around with it, see if I can just kind of wiggle it out of the ground. Yeah, that'll do. That actually, it slid out without too many complications. Just kind of wiggled it back and forth and pulled it all the way down and pulled it out. Didn't even have to lift it, but you can kind of tell from looking in here, but this is all going to be dying back here in a matter of weeks, so that's all right. It's okay, no harm done. Was this pot off and now just time to start moving some things in. I still have more cleaning to do in the garage. Just didn't, I don't have time to do it in the vlog. I'm sorry. I, I, does it doesn't really matter. You'll see what's going on with all that next week. I'll do more next week. I just didn't have time with everything else going on with my house, my family, all good things, but just every day, you know, life stuff going on to like film all of the happening. So I decided that with, when it comes to like organizing the plants in the garage, 
I will probably just kind of scoot them out of the way for now, and then I can do that in a vlog when I have more time to like actually look at the plants and have some more fun with them. Because I don't, with the moving the plants around, I think it's kind of nice and more fun to look at them together. And proceed from there with getting things moved around. And I, for some reason, had this mentality that I had to get everything put exactly where it needed to go, like right from the get, and I don't know. I don't know why I do that to myself. That's not like, there's there's no rush. I just need to make sure that they're taken care of and they have light and everything. I can always keep moving things around. This may not fit in the garage. This might have to go in the house, which would be unfortunate, but that's okay. It's a pretty plant. I mean, it's gonna take up the entire foyer because it's so wide when it's standing up, but hey, I'm not gonna complain about having big palm trees in the house. It may not look that impressive, but I actually did make a pretty decent amount of progress in here. That was kind of shaky. Sorry about that. It's not quite what I had expected, but the week wasn't what I was expected. That's just life. That's okay. So I haven't just been grabbing random plants and pulling them to where I want them to go. I've also been like looking them over very closely, checking anything out that might need some more spraying, more like detailed spraying, making sure to like get down inside everything and trying to pull off dead foliage and cleaning out the bottoms of the pots you know those get full of leaves especially pine needles we had that big pine tree that died over the summer Does you know what i'm talking about you remember that well when that pine tree got cut down it was just pine, it was just a sea of pine needles okay why are you so thirsty come on now gingers that's what gingers do they're always thirsty that's one of the plants actually that i was considering i was like do i want to keep it they're not that hard to overwinter but they just never look very great by the time spring comes back around. Like when I move them back outside, they kind of throw a bit of a fit and get a little bit leggy and then they have to take the time to recover. And I'm like, is it worth it? I think it is, because I really enjoy them. They're beautiful. Why am I not looking at the plant I'm talking about? I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. Don't know why I'm apologizing so much. They uh, are beautiful, especially when they're all opened up and not too thirsty. The temperatures in here right now are actually rather cool because these doors have been opened a big chunk of the day. My family's been here and been get, like taking Christmas stuff outside, Christmas lights and decor and all that stuff and working with leaves. So 30 bags of leaves. I think I showed you that, didn't I? Maybe? I don't know, guys. I think my brain's done. It just stopped. Got a case of the brain scramblies going on over here. I'm pretty sure I talked about it. Anyways, temperatures are a little bit cool in here because those doors were open, so I'm not going to water this just yet. I want things to warm back up, so I'll give it a drink in the morning, but that's all this is. These curly leaves, it's just saying, hey, I'm thirsty and it got cold. And yeah, the mix is pretty dry though, so it does need a drink. It needs to warm up in here first though. It doesn't have to. I could go ahead and give it a little drink, but whenever you water tropicals, not all tropicals, but particularly these gingers, bananas, um, of what else, hibiscus, bird of paradise, whole bit, lots of plants. When you water them when temperatures are below like 65, this, the risk of root rot just skyrockets. So I'm just gonna have to wait because it's only like 60 in here. It'll be warmed up. It'll probably be like 75, 77 in here by like 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. 10 a.m. tomorrow morning is when I'm going to be getting this vlog ready to go out. I'm going to give these guys all a nice cut and take them in the house tomorrow or Sunday. You know, this is just, I'm going to call this a two-part vlog because I didn't really complete what I sent out to, sent out to, what I set out to when I started this video. So next week can go ahead and... I'll, I'll handle all that next week. It just wasn't time. This philodendron is already perking up from its repot, which is great. That's what I was hoping would happen. It cut off all that weird lanky foliage though. It's been, uh, what's today is Friday. I did this repot on Tuesday. So it's just been a few days and the soil is still moist about an inch, two inches down, but starting to dry at the top. So I will have to keep an eye on this blend and make sure that it does dry evenly, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. This is a pretty similar mix to stuff I've used on the majority of my aeroids out here. They all seem to have done well with it. Oh, the orchids, that's right. Oh, I'm so sorry, my pretty Vandas. I forgot about you. Those are gonna need a pretty big drink in the morning too. I know last week I was saying I didn't know how I felt about this fountain, mostly because how the water's not on there evenly. I think I can fix that though. But after seeing it in the video when I had all the rest of the lights on, that looked, I didn't mind how that looked in the background with this philodendron. A little bit big. I'm sorry, thematophyllum. Too big. Yes, but it looked nice with all the lights on it. I did, I enjoyed that. I'm going to try, I think I have some card, yeah, I do. There's some cardboard here. I might just, I already have some under there, but it's just apparently not enough. That's probably going to be too much. We will see. Try and level that out some yeah 
I mean, that looks a little bit better. It'll look even better when that area over there dries off and it's more even on each side. But the problem is this. Well, that just looks stupid. <laughs> I don't care. Overthinking things, it's fine. I like to mix things up every now and then. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I mean, in a couple weeks, who knows what I'm gonna feel like having over here on the desk. I probably feel like doing something completely different. Actually, because I do have my holiday stuff sitting in a tote. So it might be time to start getting set up for Vlogmas. Yeah? No? Maybe? I haven't come to a decision yet on Vlogmas. I've had people ask me about it and I'm just, I don't know, I'm on the fence. It's fun to do. I've done it before. It's also exhausting. So if I do do Vlogmas, then it's not going to be every day. It'll just be like a few more days a week than I'm already uploading, which I think is fine. That's plenty. With the everyday thing, that can be complicated because not everybody has time to watch the videos every day. And I know some of you will tell me that to just upload as much as I want to, which is very kind and very sweet. But there are plenty of others out there who probably get kind of annoyed getting the notifications constantly of the new videos and trying to keep up with things. So I'm going to give it a shot, but I'm not making promises. And it's gonna be very low-key, very casual, kind of like the weekend vlogs. And just fun, happy plant time. That's gonna be the overall objective. I'm not gonna be taking it too seriously at all. This is kind of my first time sitting here and like actually just looking around. Just to be clear, when I was talking about how much it's grown earlier, I'm not complaining. I'm very much into this. That looks amazing. This plant, I've had it for such a long time. It's so fun when you have them for a really long time and you get to see them grow and mature and start to get those deep fenestrations on the leaves. Even if this were just a regular Monstera, it'd be just the same because this tie, it's pretty and I love it, but it doesn't like it's variegation. <laughs> like kind of sucks compared to what we see on most of those ones that are for sale for like a few hundred dollars for a little stick. This is just, it's, it's mostly green with some little specks. Not the most attractive variegation. I don't, I mean, I don't care. I'm just, enjoyed the big monstera factor of it you know it's probably time to go though i don't have anything left productive to do other than just sitting around and talk about the plants which i do very much enjoy but i feel like i've already done an awful lot of that in this video so hopefully next week this will be more full with more plants have some repotting to do uh, gotta get the more cold tolerant semi-tropicals moved inside figure out what to do with the queen palm that just grew like insanity this year with those queen palms when they get to that size oftentimes i'll just lay them down on the ground in the garage and they're really hardy and tough and they're always fine with that it's just right now since i'm moving so many other things around i don't really want a palm tree laying across the ground so i might just tuck it in the house for i don't know several days maybe a couple weeks and then bring it back out here and just lay it on the ground when the time's more appropriate, when I have the freedom of space out here. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. If you watched all the way to the end, then thank you. I'm very flattered, I really do appreciate it. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.